Hi, this is Julie Escobar, and today we are with Floyd Wickman to share some some phenomenal ideas and strategies that he takes from his wildly successful um, program and to share some of the, the best ideas and solutions that salespeople are using today to go from good to great, and in many cases, to go from failure to success. Um, he's got a lot to, to share with us as far as failing first and how that has related to his life. So thanks for being here, Floyd. Hi, Julie. It's good to be here with you, and I appreciate uh, the invitation to share some ideas with my friends out there. I created a simple checklist, a 10-point checklist that will help somebody stay aligned and motivated toward achieving their long-range goal. And so uh, item, item number one is to convert your goal into your purpose or find your goal from your purpose. If we look at the two factors, a goal and purpose, generally speaking, one of the two is more, most deep-rooted, and that's the purpose. If you can figure out what your purpose in life is and your purpose as, as a husband or as a wife or as a mother, uh, your purpose as a person, and you're in the sales business, and you can help achieve that purpose through productivity in your business, then you, you, you sort of tie the two together, and you'll have greater motivation. Number two, convert your goal to activity. In other words, if I want to achieve X number of dollars, and I know what my ratios are, Say in real estate, I know what percentage of my listings will sell and close. I know what percent of my listings would generate buyers for me. So, I, so if I figure it all out and I know how many appointments I have to go on to achieve my goal, I break it all the way down to activity. In other words, I have to go on three appointments a week, we'll say hypothetically. Three a week, three a week for 48 weeks. So all I have to think about then is how many appointments each week. Now, here's why it's important. Number three is to track your activity and your results daily. I mean, what I mean is, in a given week, i got to go on three appointments. Well, let's say this week I couldn't go on three. I couldn't go on any because something happened in the car and this happened in the family, yada, da 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 uh, so that's okay. It's only one week. Don't worry about it. What do I have to do next week? I've got to go on six. Let's say I work real hard and I go on two. Well, that's okay. The next week, what do I have to do? I have to go on seven. And let's pretend I go on three. The next week, I have to go on seven. I go on three, the next week I have to go on seven and on down the line, but the next week I can only go on one. That means the sixth week into this, I have to go on nine appointments. And what are the odds, if I had a hard time going on three a week, that I'm going to be able to go on nine? Pretty slim odds. But the question is, and by the way, this is a big part of this article. Why is it important to do it? Because the question isn't so much what, it's what and when. In other words, how do you know, I should say how and when, how do you know that you're behind? And when do you know that you're behind? See, if you're just a little bit behind, it takes just a little bit of skill and energy to catch up. If you're a lot behind, it takes a lot of energy and skill to catch up. Number four, oh yeah, watch out for detours. The three most common detours in our industries the sales industry is either try this, meaning always trying to implement something different, even before the what you're doing now is even beginning to work or, or did work, is, or you're starting to work and you hear something else, you can try that, try that, try that, you end up all over the place. Or secondly, it's uh, 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 adversities. You know, something bad happens, knocks you for a loop, you lay on the sofa and watch Jerry Springer for the next three days. That's all that. <laughs> That's called depression. That's a slump. And so uh, adversity is okay. But years ago, a probate judge read, read my book, Mentoring, and he asked me if I would train some mentors to work with the kids that are in trouble through the probate court. 
detention home in trouble with the law and all that sort of thing, trouble at school. So having been from where I came from, I suggest instead of me working with the mentors, let me work with the students. So I did an eight-week class with the students. We had a great, great amount of success. And the most improved student, he did the valedictorian speech at, at graduation, and these kids, by the way, you know, they if they had two parents, there was usually some sort of abuse, some sort of addiction, usually uh, money problems in the family. There was all kinds of stuff going on with these kids. A couple of them were, were in jail and had to be let out of detention home to take the class. So, so we think we have problems. They had a lot of problems. The valedictorian said the secret of my success in the program, my most improved status, is that Uncle Floyd made us do the AHA, that's A-H-A, I refer to that as an adversity handling analysis. And all I told them was that all successful people, I stibbed a little, all successful people carry with them a ledger so that every time something goes wrong, in the first column they write what went wrong, in the next column they rate it. What percentage responsibility would they take? In the next column they rate it, was it minor or major? And then we'll simply say in the last column, what did they learn and what would they do different? So for eight weeks, I had them carry that around with them. And they started learning that, wow, all you can do with adversities is learn, let go, and go on, and try not to repeat the same mistakes again and again and again. And that's so important in achieving a one-year goal. The last common detour is saying yes to everybody about everything. Can you do this for me? Yes. Can you take this uh, to the, uh, can you go to the store for me? Can you drop this off at the title company? Yes, yes. It, some people, they spend the whole life taking care of the whole world, letting themselves fall a piece. You can't take care of the world so you take care of yourself first. You've got to learn to say no. I even teach a little dialogue, but you've got to do it with a smile on your face. And it goes simply, love to, can't now. Can you take this to the store for me? Love to, can't now. Can you do this? Love to, can't not, with a smile on your face. And you know what happens 99.9% .9 of the time? That person says, oh, okay. And so they go find somebody that isn't reading this article. And they ask them, and they do it. <laughs> so remember that little dialogue. Uh, number five, schedule vacations in advance. Now, first, we've got to realize the difference between a vacation and a couple days off. A couple days off is enough time to go home, get some chores done, get your butt back to the office more tired than you came in. A vacation is when there's a series of days so you can unwind. I ask an audience, think about one word that best describes a vacation. They yell out different words, but we always hear it's far away, I'm having fun, I'm with loved ones, there's no, I don't use my phone, I'm away from business. It's just all of those positive things. And what happens? Well, Everybody's physiologically different. Some people need a week to unwind. Some people need two weeks. I need three days to unwind and then maximum another maybe 10 days to have fun. And by the eighth day, I want to go back to work. So that's a perfect <laughs> vacation for me. Schedule it in familiar. advance. And you ske yeah, schedule it in advance, and here's what happens. Your energy level goes up, not down. You know, if you start thinking, well, I'm going on vacation in 90 days, the next week I'm going in 83 days, and the next week, well, I'm going in 66 days, and it's go it just builds the excitement of two more days, day after, you know, tomorrow, you know, and it builds rather than, oh, God, when will this ever end? You know, <laughs> when am I going to get a break? Your break is your visual. And if you can schedule a couple of vacations every year, for many of you, that will help take you through the year. Number six, create accountability. We've got the perfect accountability system in the world. And look at the results. Those people, after 214 agents over a two-year period of time, 2010 and 2011, average hitting 99.2% of their annual goal. Isn't that amazing? Well, all we do, we don't teach them anything. They're already graduates, but we do hold them accountable once a week. And they average over 80 transactions a year. The power, the power of accountability. <laughs> yeah. 
seven is re-engineer at intervals. In other words, you know, we start off Monday. By the time we get to Friday, we got all this stuff in our brains and our minds sticking on us, like almost like a dust mop that we didn't even know about on Monday. If we step into the next Monday with all these things still in our mind and we don't get them off our mind, by the time we get to that Friday, we're going to begin getting burnt out, and that's the beginning of losing sight of your goal. So what you have to do at intervals, probably once a week, is write down everything that you did the previous week that you can remember, draw a line through everything that could have been eliminated, circle everything that could have been delegated, add up those hours or minutes, and see how much time you spent that could have been eliminated or delegated. You'll be amazed at the results. Number eight, stay trained. So important, stay trained. Number nine, compartmentalize your activities. In other words, you know, set aside something each week. Set aside time in advance that you're going to prospect. Set aside time in advance that you're going to be with your family. Set aside plenty of flex time so you know when to schedule appointments. Pre-schedule everything, and then once you're in that period of time, leave the rest of the world out there. Take your cell phone and say, I'm, I'll be returning calls at 2 o'clock, leave a message, and I'll get back to you then. Guess what? There's not a person in the world going to be upset because you said that, yet you'll be in more control of your time. Because if you step outside that compartment and answer a phone, answer questions, do something else, you are out of control with your time. Number 10, visualize your goal. Take your goal, put it into a picture, put it all over the house, create a thermometer, whatever you have to do. And there is an 11, and it has to do with stress. And that is, make a list of everything you're worrying about every day. And then about oh, three weeks from now, go back to that list. Draw a line through everything that didn't actually come true. You're going to be amazed and how few things that you worry about actually happen. So here's something my, my brother, my friend Zig Ziglar said to me over and over and over again during struggling times. He said, don't worry, that's God's job. I love a phrase entitled, let go, let God. So you do these 11 things. You carry this list with you. Your odds of failing would be simple. You couldn't fail if you tried.